All right, so thank you for coming in today. Um, just as a starter, could you just tell us your name, your degree, and what you're doing? Uh, I'm Eve, um, Eve Wan. I'm currently a second year student of Commerce and Law, majoring in Finance. Yep, second year. All right, yep. awesome. And what's your campaign color and slogan? Um, it's color pink, and my slogan is We Believe, because we believe the last three letters are Eve, that's my name. Yep. All right, awesome. Um, Let's just icebreaker. So, do you have a favorite book or favorite USU production that you've been to in the past few years? Um, because <laughs> like this is only my second year in Australia. Yeah. I love my favorite book by Chinese book, so okay. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Yeah. But his name is um, Ban Shengyuan, just okay. a famous Chinese writer's yeah. book. Okay. Yeah. Have you um? Do you have a favorite USU production? Um, by production you mean like the publication or our shows like shows oh, I love um, I love welcome with the best well, okay yeah okay awesome and uh, some reviews oh reviews which one yeah. in particular international reviews okay yeah, yeah awesome um, and I guess my next question is are you a member of any political party no no I'm political neutral neutral mm -hmm. um, I guess politically you're neutral but how would you describe your own political philosophy I'm I'm an independent candidate, and here I'm a like politically neutral. I don't stand for any like labor or liberal. I'm just mm. yeah, yeah, independent. But outside of uni, mm. would you have any political beliefs that maybe a candidate, um, your students want to know about? Um, for me, I don't like. Um, I just describe myself as neutral. I don't have a specific like. Um, like tendency to any party or any policy. Mm. Yeah. Uh, is there a particular party you feel very aligned with? No, currently no. Currently not. Right. Awesome. Um, can you give us a few examples of um, political policies or positions you would support generally? Um, maybe actually no. Um, is there a political view you have which is generally considered quite right wing or left wing? Um, I just say I'm just between a loving and a red wing. I'm just totally independent and totally neutral. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I guess um, in terms of student politics, have you previously campaigned for any candidates or been nominated in any campus election? No, no. This no. is my first time. So you haven't campaigned for anyone before in the past. Um, I helped Zimong Yi last year for USU yeah. and that's it, okay. <laughs> but I, I'm not nominated for anything. Okay. Um, and are you a member or are you aligned with any political faction on campus? No. No. Okay. no currently no. Um, not independent? Actually I'm an independent, independent? candidate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like so. At first like some editors say um, panda but I cracked mm. it. Yeah, okay. Mm. So. Um, I guess, do you have sort of any ties with Panda? I would say like Panda is just a international student party. Mm -hmm. Like everyone has said, is a a great force in campus. But personally, I'm not related. Yep. Not related to yep. um uh, to okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess okay. What about your campaign manager? Do they belong to a political faction on campus? No, no, I'm sorry. Um, my campaign manager is also neutral and independent because we are work the, working on the same thing. We must like believe in the same thing. Yeah. Um, who is your uh, campaign manager? It's Sonia Gao. Sonia Gao, mm -hmm. all right. Um, so, yeah, so you say that um, while you think that Panda is you know, just an organization for international students mm -hmm. on campus, you have not been affiliated mm -hmm. with them. Have you done anything with them before? No. No, okay. No, I just know them. Just know them? Yeah. All right, um, I guess we're going to... Okay, yeah. Um, so I guess our first question would be, um, my first question would be, what inspired you to run on the board of a multi-million dollar student organization? Um, actually, this is like, um, this is my second year in USA, and I have experienced a great student like unique experience, but I feel like there are a lot of things that we can improve them. 
end of the week, I would like to make all the students have a better experience on campus, and especially national students, um, to help them to engage more. Yep. And has there been anyone in particular who has been inspiring you or pushing you to run for this election? Um, there's not like a specific person, but I would say the whole international students group is very me. Okay. Um, and how long have you been interested in running for USC board? Um, how long have I been uh, introduced? Interested. interested. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, like since last year, I helped the mom um, run the election. I know that there is a great chance for people, especially international students, to get involved. Um, especially from the board. So at that time I feel this is a good thing and to this matter I decided to run it. Mm -hmm. And um, so what do you think you bring from all your experience with campaigning for your friend? Mm -hmm. um, like as myself an international student is a better tr um, opportunity for me to think something that some domestic cannot think about it. it. Just like people from different backgrounds can have like different opinions. So I would say myself can bring some opinions from the people who are from overseas. Like they have may have like different cultural experience and they may have like different expectations. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, how long have you held an access membership? Um, as long as um, I enrolled in USA, <laughs> I had it. So it's been like more than a year. Okay. Um, and if you had to identify the most important USU program or event for students in mm -hmm. general, mm -hmm. which one would it be and why? Um, I personally feel like all week and the reviews are the most are the top two programs I love the best. For the all week, it's a really great opportunity for new students um, to like. Um, get to know the campus and know what's going on, which are the like great um, clubs and societies, and where do I need to turn to if I need help. And for the review, it's just a great chance to talk to what you want and to like show how you want to get engaged in campus. Mm -hmm. And at a personal level, which USU program are you most involved with? Um, USU program, I feel all less. <laughs> so I can, sh I can um, give you a few examples, uh -huh. like would that be reviews, would that be clubs and societies, mm -hmm. would that be, um, you know, political factions yeah. which, or clubs, which one would you be most involved with? Um, I think then is clubs and societies. I currently join three clubs and societies. The first one is sales because I'm a law school student, mm -hmm. so it's just university. Um, law student society mm -hmm. and uh, I also joined badminton club because a mm -hmm. good way to relax yourself and to make uh, friends with more people and I also joined CDS China Development Society. Okay yeah. um, and so most candidates come with extensive CNS experience um, one of them even comes with seven CNS positions in this election mm -hmm. um, and how much CNS experience as an exec have you had? Um, I'm not a exactly in any of the clubs I just mentioned, but I work or in, like I work or like have experience uh, in this three clubs mm -hmm. and societies. Um, I host some several academic events, China Talk in CDS. Right, um, and. So comparatively, you may have less CNS experience compared to other candidates mm -hmm. on this current election. Um, do you think that makes you less qualified for the role? I don't really think that because CNS is just only a part of the whole uni experience. Yep. There are a lot of things that we can mm -hmm. um, that I, I'm more qualified. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so if not CNS, then what? do you think makes you particularly strong? I think it's interaction with international students because we have um, one hit 19, uh, sorry, it's 190,000 international students in this campus, so it's really a large number. Mm -hmm. And as I am one of them, so I can know them better. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and on this campus, speaking of which, um, have you sought support from any student groups? Because in the lead up to elections, um, candidates often tend to um, neutral, um, 
catalyze their networks within campus? Have you approached any political factions, clubs, colleges, residential accommodation, uni departments for support in this election? Um, I didn't specifically like um, ask help for any like, specific organization, no. Okay. Um, and have you obtained a $500 election grant from the USU? Yeah. 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 Um, so how do you plan on, because as you may know, the spending cap this year is $700 mm-hmm. per candidate. Um, do you plan on exhausting that spending cap? Mm, you mean for next uh, year's candidates or this year? For, um, for, me? for the candidates for um, to spend on the election, you have yeah. $700 to spend. Mm-hmm. Do you intend on spending all of those, all of that money? Oh, personally, I don't. <laughs> I don't think I can like um, spend all the 700 Mm-hmm. Um, I would say it's important to use this money smart, but I don't think if you use all the 700 means that you are going to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you've obtained the $500 election grant, um, mm-hmm. have you raised the remaining $200 or how are you getting that rest of the money? Are you going to have a launch party? Are you going to ask friends to donate or are you going to self-fundraise? Um, I think I'm... I'm currently in the range of uh, below the 500, so I'm currently not worried about those 200. Okay, okay. Um, and so would you be using, to advertise and to like get support um, before elections, would you be using co-flutes or A-frames? Um, I'm going to use A-frames. Okay, and will you be using, are those recycled from a previous campaign? No, no, because I didn't hear, like, um, I didn't know that anyone has the left A-frames. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I know that there are some recycled, I, I would definitely use them. Mm-hmm. And um, so that means you're, you're buying new A-frames? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so this year there are a sizable number of candidates running for USU board. Um, what do you think makes your campaign particularly stand out from the nine others? Um, I feel like the most um, important part for me is that I'm, I've just described myself as a bridge between international students and Australian students. Because um, like personally, I'm one of the international students, but at the same time, I'm also quite interested and um, actively involved in like Australian campus culture. So mm-hmm. I would say that's my feature. Can you give us an example of standout moment of interacting with Australian campus culture? Yeah, for example, um, I just mentioned I host several um, academic events, the China Talk. Um, in this event, I just invite some like academics to share their experience. So people from, um, especially they share some opinions about like Chinese and Australian uh, relationship and uh, global governance. So in this event, students, no, no matter from like Australia or overseas, can um, listen, can like get more ideas, like have more like, experience. Yeah. Awesome. So as we said before, there are a lot of candidates running um, mm-hmm. this year for the election. Are there um, any candidates in particular who you closely identify with or you share views with? Um, there's no like specific um, candidate, no. no. Um, would you um, preference yourself first and other candidates second, or f- um, third, fourth? I, um, I haven't worked on a preference. Yes. So um, right now, are you in any talks for preference deals? Or? No, currently no. No? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I guess the flip side of that question is, are there any candidates that you don't really identify with? Um, I think like everyone is pretty good, like all the candidates here in this election is great, <laughs> so no. Alright, <laughs> fair enough. Um, okay, so looking at the current um, USU board, what do you think has been their biggest shortcoming? Uh, biggest shortcoming? Mm. Um, I would just say like, um, USU is a really great and a big organization, but I didn't put a lot of focus on international students, especially their involvement and engagement with campus. Um, for example, even though we have like we we chat a client to have some like media um, interact with international students, but the client is currently don't have a lot of followers. So 
I just think the all comment, um, the shortcoming is um, that there is still a space for the media platform to have more influence. Yeah, I guess like even now on the USU board there are two mm -hmm. um, sort of um, Heng Jia Sun of course and then who you worked with um, last year, Zimin. Um, on the current USU on board. On the current USU board. Mm -hmm. What can you add to the USU board in engaging with international students that they can't do? I um because I have experience in in the Chinese societies, so I have like I know more Chinese students, and at the same time I'm um, I join other societies, so I feel like I can be um, I can know more people and I can add more followers to this platform. Um, I guess looking to the future, what do you envision are the sort of biggest challenges the USU board is going to face mm -hmm. in the next two years? Um, in the next two years, um, I think it's still, because I focus a lot on international students, I would still say it's international <laughs> students. Just um, getting, helping international students to get involved in campus is a really big issue. Um, there are such a big number of international students, but not a lot of them know what a USU is and how does it operate and what benefits can they obtain from it. Okay. And what do you think are the greatest achievements of the current USU board? Oh, there are like a lot of achievements, but personally, I would like to say the, um, um, the payment, like WeChat payment and Alipay. Yeah, because it's it really convenient. You just only need to use your phone. You don't need to use your wallet and credit cards. And that's been introduced into USU uh, last like, year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you think is there a board director? Um, I guess current or from the past mm -hmm. who you particularly admire? Um, there's like no particularly one, but there are ones. I admire all those international um, boards because. Um, they really work a lot on this to be a board and at the same time they introduce a lot to students, um, both international students and domestic students. Um, you, as most candidates you've mentioned, you want to prioritize student interests. Um, domestic and international both. Mm. How would you say the definition of student interest has changed over the past few years to what it is now? The interest change? Um, this is like this question um, I would say like different people have like different opinions towards how how to define change but personally I think the changes that was the increase on the number of international students. Like we, the campus cannot like try to avoid the voice from international students. And this number is going to increase in the next following years. So that's the change, I think. Okay. And so you think the inclusion of um, international students dramatically changes student interest on campus. Is that correct? It's not dramatically, just it's gradually. Okay. Um, so you've mentioned you're a neutral candidate. Mm -hmm. um, do you think politics plays into decisions on the USU board? Do I think what? Sorry. That politics has a role in the USU. Um, I, I think I agree with that because a lot of candidates have like political backgrounds. Okay. Um, and over the last few years, USU candidates with political and activist leanings have been told their skills and policies would be better suited for the SRC. Mm -hmm. So where do you think the line is drawn between the SRC and the USU? Mm, like SRC is um, it's an, it's an organization that clearly expresses its political interests, mm -hmm. but uh, USU is more like, as its question says, uh, trying to provide a better university experience. So USU should focus more on um, like university experience. I would draw the line um, between the events or the program, the can, uh, 
board directors are trying to promote, like I would say, if the program is not too political, like it's not political um, interest, then it's okay. If it's 100% trying to trying to gain some political interest, then that's not what the USU is trying to do. Yeah. Well, the SRC makes substantially lesser than the USU per year. Don't you think the USU should take on a more politically charged role in that case? Because they have in the past with the political decision to ban plastic straws on campus and so forth. Um, I don't really think so. Because, um, as we just mentioned, like the USU is just only trying to provide a better university experience. I'm a little bit afraid that um, with too much involvement of political backgrounds and political forces, um, it's going to be hard to only focus on the um, like student service. Um, people may try to get only get involved in political fights. Mm -hmm. And so, in the event that let's put you back to a time where um, plastic straws were not b banned on campus yet, um, would you support that decision? Uh, sorry, what's the decision? Plastic straws being banned across uh, campus? Um, I personally love this because <laughs> it helps um, people, like there are, like, um, I feel there are two main reasons. The first reason is that um, banning the plastic straws um, um, is trying to help this campus more environmental. At the same time, it just reminds people that it, re it reminds students that if you are using um, like paper straws on campus, you should also re uh, remember that you it better use some um, paper straws outside mm -hmm. campus. Don't you think that is a politically charged decision though from the USU? Um, like because it does have impacts of wider political discourse throughout Australian society. Um, actually, because I didn't do a lot of research on this, uh, it's background of this events. Just only from the environmental, like the uh, from environmental will, I think this is a good decision. But when it relates to like political forces, political grounds, um, I think I need to do more research to talk about this. So now I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions about transparency. Mm -hmm. So I imagine you are aware of the union board's informal processes, like pre-board meetings committees, emails, all of that. So there are lots of ways the USU can make decisions without them being um, publicly available. Do you believe this sort of detracts from the board's transparency? Mm. This, I think this question needs to think from different um, wheels. Like on, on one side, if people can use communicate with emails, this definitely save some time and the paper is just trying to cut um, cut more like budget mm -hmm. and from the other hand like it does um, affects a little on the transparency so um, I think it depends it depends on like how much does USU put um, like email in their working process okay um, and I guess sort of you've mentioned this before about how even though the USU has a WeChat, it hasn't been engaging international students as much as maybe um, you would like. Mm -hmm. um, what efforts do you think you would do to improve the sort of dialogue and transparency of the USU um, sort of process and decision making through sort of communicating with um, members of the USU? Mm, so like transparency and the WeChat kind like, like for example I the use the, the USU to communicate its policies uh -huh. would often use WeChat to sort of say this is what we're doing mm -hmm. um, and that by knowing what they are doing it is becoming more transparent mm -hmm. um, what would you do? would you or do anything further to ensure that students know what the USU is doing mm -hmm. to increase transparency um, I think I'd like to do further um, the first one I'm going to do is to increase the frequency of like WeChat account. Um, I know it's a good account and the editors are really great, but I feel like they they still need to have more like uh, articles to let people know what's going on. And as for the transparency, um, currently I feel the WeChat account feels um, is more about. Um, where's the best place to study? Where's the best place to eat? There have been a lot of like 
what's going on. So I would like to increase this part more. Um, what social media platforms will you be campaigning on, if any? So Facebook, Twitter, BuzzFeed, WeChat. Um, I'm going to use Facebook and WeChat. Okay, great. Um, and if you're elected, how will you approach deciding who to vote for president in the upcoming USU executive board election? Uh -huh, it depends on whether I can be elected. Mm -hmm. So it depends. Let's just say you are. Yeah. Um, I think this. I like. I I know who are currently in the board, but I would like to do more research. So, yeah, currently okay. no idea. Okay. Um, of the eligible board directors, which includes Maya, Lachlan, Ditching, Connor, and Jimming, um, who would you most likely vote for president? Mm, I know they are all great um, board directors, but I think it depends on how do they like um, explain their um, their vision in. Um, after they become president. Okay. Um, so there's no one particular candidate who's currently on the board that you would have voted for? I'm currently no particular. Okay. Um, I guess coming to international student issues, in recent years, um, since Chinese international student Yifan Kong was elected as a board director in 2016, campus has seen a rise in international student-backed campaigns, um, led mm -hmm. prominently by Panda, and advance in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, given the size of international students groupings on campus and international student accessibility being one of the USU's major priorities according to the 2017 to 2020 strategic plan, um, how will you tailor your policies to consider the voices of that student block in specifics? Um, in my policies, there are several policies um, that can help international students more. For example, I would like to promote uh, caps to have more to have uh, multi language counseling and also I, I want to uh, have a online ranting platform that can help international students a lot. Yep. Could you go into that a bit more? An online ranting platform? Yeah, it's pretty uh, much renting. Renting, yes. yeah, sorry. Um, should we talk about policies? Yeah, um, yeah, I think maybe you should go into sort of case studies. Yeah. Yeah, case studies. Okay. Um, we'll go back to your policies very yeah. soon, mm -hmm. yeah. but we're just going to give you a few case studies. And so in this one, we really want you to think that you were in that situation and how you would react. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, go first. so the Panda Aligned Board Director, Hinge Sun, has been um, absent from a number of USU board elections this year. How would you approach relationships with board directors who are repeatedly absent from meetings? Um, I think the first one I'm going to do is to find out why the person is absent. And after that, I think I would like to communicate with, um, once I get information and a reason, I would like to communicate with other like um, directors so we can discuss on this. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll go to another one. Um, in 2016, the USU threatened to deregister the Evangelical Union from the CNS program over its requirement that members must make a declaration of faith in Jesus Christ. Um, the USU argued that faith-based requirements limit participation. Um, and in 2018, over 80 USU clubs called on the USU to delay a new policy where it would not fund alcohol at club events off campus. Mm -hmm. The USU has a track record of running into obvious conflicts with clubs and societies. How would you resolve a situation, um, if you were in that case, where conflicting interests between USU and student cl clubs come head to head? Um, I think the first one I'm going to do is just, as I mentioned, is the communication. As communication helps you to know why the person, like why the societies and um, USU is like um, against each other. And at the same time, I think I also need to like remind myself that as USU is the platform to um, help clubs and societies to have to be better. So I, if there is like there is something 
if there is a conflict that cannot be solved, I would like to discuss with others and try to find a way to make um, each party happy. Um, would you ever collaborate with the USU in such a case? Uh, I elaborate, sorry. Collaborate, so work with the USU in close um, decision making capacity. Mm, I think it depends. Like it depends on the like the specific situation. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I know, for example, this year a really big change that the USU has brought is um, its funding changes mm -hmm. into how the clubs and societies will be funded. Mm -hmm. um, as a part of the sort of, I guess it was it came in part with the sort of universal, um, so everyone now gets USU membership. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, I just want to ask, what are your thoughts on the funding changes, if you have any in particular? Um, I don't know if there is like any political, like backgrounds and reasons for this, so I would not comment on this part, but only from the clubs and societies part, it just uh, makes clubs and societies harder to hold like big on a, a big events. Yeah, I mean, if you were USU, um, I guess you must know, but for example, the process which these changes were rolled out um, has been described by people as not being ideal, but if you were in that position, how would you have managed the rollout of these um, changes mm -hmm. across the university? You mean like after the finding, I need to communicate with them or before the... Well, before. before. Okay, how before. Would you? Um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is to discuss with like, the presence from um, different clubs and societies. We need to talk with them and to have a look at what they are really looking for. If the funding um, and now is too much for them or not enough for them. At the same time, we should also like talk to USU and especially it, it relates to communication with the school how is like, the staff allocated to USU, so it depends on a lot. I, I think the most important part is to communicate with all the parties involved. Um, I've just got one more yeah. case study. Um, in recent times, the USU has been criticized for failing to take an official stance on issues facing the university and its students. In 2017, the USU voted to stay open during the NTEU industrial action rallies. Um, and in 2018, the USU failed to take a position on the university's. Uh, the USU failed to take a position on the university's agreement with um, the Ramsey Center for Western Civilization. Um, do you support the USU using its resources to take a political stance on issues of public importance? Um, as personally, I'm a neutral politically person, so I. I don't really like political forces to be too much involved in USU, but um, I, I would like to do more research on this question, mm -hmm. like to know the details about it. So, but from now, I just really cannot give yeah. a clear conclusion. Um, so, let's. So I can give you a bit of a spiel on what the Western Ramsey Center for Western Civilization is. It's basically a. Um, they want to open a new part of UCID mm -hmm. that focuses on imparting the benefits of Western civilization. Mm -hmm. um, and this is seen as a form of imperialism. Mm -hmm. um, and so would you think it would be appropriate in this case for the USU to take a public stance against this? Mm. Um, because the USU yeah. takes a stance on you know the environment and plastic and that's all right but what happens when it's about widespread imperialism spreading on the campus um as we like as what you USU mentioned at first they are trying to provide better service so all the directors and the USU should focus is on a student service and when we come to an event or some like a new new thing we need to think is that good for students, is that what students want? So what, um, for this, I, I would like to talk to more students, like both international students, uh, exchange students, domestic students, I would really like to talk, them. So talk to them. So if they feel like, yeah, this is what I want, then it's okay for you to do it. I think it's not what I personally want, it's just what students 
are trying to achieve. Is that to say that you will be willing to take a political stance on issues which the majority of the student body feels very strongly on? Um, I would say me, per I personally just um, a political neutral, but this, what students want is we can, I mean like if students are have a really strong political like tendency or whatever, um, I think we can try to work with, but whatever I like personally just political neutral. Mm -hmm. um, and I just ask a few questions on pulp and SSAF. Yeah. Um, do you believe that the USU should place KPIs or more strictly oversee the quality and quantity of articles published by Pulp? Um, yeah, I think so. It's just a good way to um, make working efficient. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you think could be improved about Pulp? Um, by Pulp, um, it's just still a big issue for Pulp and just like the WeChat con. Mm -hmm. um, Students around campus don't not I mean like not all students around campus know it and especially mm -hmm. national students. So um, I think it's a it needs to have a great change or a great improvement to um, have more followers, to have more what um, people to know what they are going yep. through. Um, really quickly, coming to the SSAF, mm -hmm. um, do you support the current SSAF system as an iteration of compulsory student unionism? Mm, um, I don't really know a lot about this, so mm -hmm. <laughs> just, yeah. Okay. Do you believe the allocation of SSAF among student organizations over the last few years has been equitable? Um, as as we can see from this, um, the allocation is not equally, like different organizations have a different like proportion of it. Mm -hmm. But I would say it's fair because like uh, USO is a big organization and it has a lot of things to do. So a larger prop, uh, proportion of allocation is is good. Okay, um, I think we move on to your specific policy questions mm -hmm. now, if that's yeah. alright. Bob, do you want to? Um, I guess even before we um, talk about your policies in particular, I just some more questions about sort of your past involvement with things on campus, in particular the China Development Society, mm -hmm. a group which, um, you know, has been the source of a lot of student politicians in recent years, like Jackie He, who is the current SRC president. Mm -hmm. um, but there have been sort of allegations that the China Development Society is very, very close to the sort of Chinese government and a lot of I guess, students are mm -hmm. wary of that. For example, Jackie He spoke at a Chinese Communist Party United Front event. Um, so what is your response to that kind of allegation? I would say like students here in Australia are international students. They may come from China and they may come from any other country around the world. but. Different people have different opinions, especially political opinion. We just cannot say they are like Chinese students, so they must believe in all the like Chinese political like opinions. So um, I would say um, it is just an individual uh, behavior. It cannot stand for the whole society or the whole Chinese international students. I mean, of course, but the Chinese Development Society. Mm -hmm. um, you know, has what? What do you would just what not in all international students mm -hmm. or all international students from China? But what about the China Development Society? Yeah, China Development Society. If you like a radius um, consultation or know more about it, is a non profit non profit uh, sorry yeah, yeah, non profit um, academic society. So, and its main like main events coming just uh, tomorrow or the. Is other main events are focusing more on academic stuff like China Talk and the China De Development Forum. It's all about to invite someone to share their opinion. There's like no um, political like platform, especially in this um, society. Okay. Um, so you want to see rental and roommate information posted onto the USU app. Would this app be exclusively for finding a roommate, or would it also advertise share house opportunities? Um, I would like to have like um, 
three uh, sections in this app. The first one is about um, where's the best place to like rent and some such as the information to um, rent house or the student accommodation. Even though we have a accommodation page on you um, use the website, but it only provides um, a little uh, information for mm -hmm. students. I know that a lot of domestic are trying to like leave. Um, on campus or mm -hmm. off campus um, and there are also a lot of international students and they definitely don't have a home here mm -hmm. so they need to rent house for them so that's the first part to let people know where is the best place mm -hmm. and uh, the second one is a common uh, section so for me I'm living in Richmond so in this section I can talk to people how is Richmond like is a is it a good uh, accommodation and uh, where is the um, shortcoming and it is a second part and the third part is um, place people can post information like uh, I would like to um, have someone take over my contract or something like this. Yep. Um, and how would the USU take ethical responsibility for the reliability and accuracy of these advertisements? Um, I think um, it's a really good question. We, um, I thought a lot about this. I thought, I think the first part is that um, this app is different from like uh, the main or other apps. Uh, the difference is that when you are trying to log in this app, you need to use your student number. So once you log in, you, um, students know that they are under like they are under supervisation of the uni. And from the uni's point, uh, from the uni's opinion, um, if there um, there should be a clause to say that school don't um, pay, like school don't need to have 100% responsibility for such an issue. If there is something um, happen, something bad, then we have like SRC or Supra or other school organizations to help them out. Um, I guess like one of your other policies is um, you mentioned a, a weekly music performance mm -hmm. on the Law Loans um, run by student bands, but I was just wondering um, where will you be sourcing these bands from and then will they be paid? And how is this distinct from the USU's current program of you know, fortnightly funch on Eastern Avenue, which features student DJs? Oh, like um, the most, uh, I think the most obvious difference is that a Law Loan is um, a lot of people are a lot of people go through um, pass it every day so I would like dress the um, uh, weekly music show on like at daytime so people can see it so that's, um, that can attract a lot of people so that's one difference between you just mentioned and another thing is that um, I would say that um, even though there are a lot of great bands on campus or like DJ shows on campus, but people not all people know them. So I would like to give them a platform um, in the place that uh, a lot of students go through, and uh, in the daytime, the people in school to have to know that there is such a good band, and the people can be re relaxed to by listening to their music. Just following on that, though, the um, the current USU fortnightly funch program, I do believe is on the law loans, or at least close to the law loans. And it is in the day. Yeah, it is in the day as well. Um, because it's a, um, a program similar to what you're suggesting already exists, mm -hmm. is there any other way that it would be different from what already exists? I, um, I think um, a big difference would be um, in this program, I would also um, help international students about their to like forming their bands and performing because uh, I know there is such a program but not not all students know it just as I mentioned uh, several times so there are some great programs that are existing in this campus but not people uh, not all people know them mm -hmm. so that would cause like people don't know what's going on on campus if we have this program that um, because I just mentioned, it's not only um, we we ha have we land up a platform 
to play their music. It's also we are trying to help them to um, help the band to grow and provide a lot of help, such as the instruments if we have, and um, the free food to attract students. And also if they need some like translator for international students, we can also help them. Um, so you're not the only candidate fighting for off-campus access rewards. Um, the USU struggles to boost sponsorship from large brands, example Under Armour, Rainjet Usage was pretty unpopular. Um, and current off-campus perks are pretty small and relatively unknown brands. Given this, um, what brands would you approach and why? why? So like, why do you think these brands would gain, what would they gain from a USU partnership? I I don't um, I'm not going to aim at a specific brand. I would like to search more on the, the location of it. Like for example, the main aim I'm trying to achieve is that to help more students who are living off campus to get a discount from access. Mm -hmm. So I would like to do a research um, to know like where is the place that most students live uh, off campus. Mm -hmm. So that's the place we're going to partner with the most. At the same time, uh, international students need to fly um, to Australia and back to their home country every year. So and it's cost and it costs a lot. So I would like to have USU partner with the um, like the flight center or um, other places to sell the tickets. Yeah. Um, so as we've mentioned a lot of um, a lot before. Recently, there has been a very big push for international student politicians on campus um, with Panda and everything. But even in this election, there are other international student candidates. Mm -hmm. What makes you um, different from the current, um, the other international student candidates running for USU and the past um, international student politicians who have made it onto the USU? Um, I think it's my experience. I. I'm currently in the uh, currently in three societies, and in this society, in this three societies, I have done a lot of like activities. Like for example, I have been in an outreach to te to be volunteering teacher in Chinese villages, and that helps me to know more about like the. Chinese background of international students, and also what they're, uh, and I also host the academic events to, um, to know that what Chinese students are expecting in this campus. So I, yeah, so that helps the experience helps me to, um, know more about international students. I don't uh, exactly know what other candidates are, uh, has uh, what other candidates experience, but uh, as China. Development Society are one of the few societies focusing on Chinese culture and the Chinese academics. So um, I may have more like academic experience and uh, know more about like Chinese culture and the Chinese um, needs here. Yeah. Leading on from that question, I noticed that you use you sometimes use Chinese in international sort of interchangeably. But I'm, would your policies for directed at international students be limited to just Chinese international students, or do you see yourself reaching out to international students regardless of where they come from? I would say I'm just f trying to focus on the whole group of international students. I'm just taking Chinese students as an example because that's the society I'm currently in, so that's an example. Mm. Yeah. So do you see yourself sort of reaching out to international students from like India, Korea? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, I have a lot of classmates, and uh, in badminton club, we have like people from like Singapore and uh, Malaysia, all those countries. Yeah. Yeah, um, you played a really key role in Zimian Yi's USU campaign last year. Your resume says you are responsible for sharing campaign propaganda, um, sorting campaign materials, and managing allocation. Um, so you clearly believe in Zimian's policies and approach. Uh, but you say you wouldn't. Would you vote for her in that case and hang Yi San on the USU board decisions? I if was, you were in the board, I'm sorry. Um, I would say I would consider them, but not 100% vote for them. Um, I think they are really good board directors, but 
it depends. It depends on what they are trying to achieve when, if they are a president. I would really want to see more what they are going to do. I focus more on their working. It's not like their characteristics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know another one of your policies is that you're, you're looking to have multilingual counselling mm -hmm. and psychological service, yeah. services, um, an expansion of CAPS into sort of, so it can reach out to more mm -hmm. students. Could you just briefly talk about that? Um, like, currently there are a lot of international students that, um, who are, is, uh, if, especially those international students who are new to Australia, they may have some issues like homesick or depression, a lot of academic pressure. So, but, but if um, they are new to Australia, so they really have a lot of friends to talk to. So that's the reason why I'm going to do this. So um, from the point of USU, um, I would like to cooperate with like CAPS. Um, for example, we can like have some international students to talk to them about like the brave and the main issues what they are going through. So the CAPS counselor knows basically. Um, that's what we are facing at. Um, not like when they first see a like, for example, a in a international students talk to their um, talk to them about their issues, and the counselor know um, know nothing about this. Yeah. Yeah. Are you aware that the CAPS right now already has one Mandarin speaking counselor? Um, I just um, come to CAPS about two weeks ago. Mm. They told me they they have a Asian counselor, but they don't know. If he or she speaks Mandarin or Cantonese, okay. yeah. Um, but I imagine so you would be wanting to have counselors which speak the language of like an international student, so that mm -hmm. it is easier to sort of connect with international students, like introduce multilingual uh -huh. services as well. Uh -huh. right? um, if um, if the budgets okay, or if the like. Um, counselors are available. I would really would like to have more counselors who can speak another language um, in caps to talk to students. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. We also have just we, a question that we ask all candidates before mm -hmm. we finish. It's yeah. just how are you feeling right now for the election? Are you excited? Are you nervous? <laughs> um, it's both exciting and nervous because. <laughs> um, I have a lot of things to do, you know, to run the election, to prepare the A-frames, poster, all those things. But at the same time, I'm really excited to see like what election day would be like. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you for your time too. <laughs>